So this is some um, leave and start example questions for indices. And I won't say this one is tough, but it's definitely tricky. An army level probably would be considered hard, but at higher level, it should be straightforward enough for you to do. Now, I absolutely love doing these. I just think, I won't say they're fun because that probably sounds a bit sad, but they're kind of a bit fun. But anyway, we have to express this in the form four to n. So those of you thinking, I'll just listen to my calculator. No, I can't do that, unfortunately. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change all these numbers to base fours. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, 16, we know, is four squared. And you may know that 64 is four cubed. So let's first off do that. So let's do that over here, right? So um, for four squared, we're OK. So that's just four squared multiplied by 16. Now it's going to be four squared but that's going to be all to the power of one half. And that's going to be all over, and oh, my board is running all over the place on me, 64, which is four cubed. And that's going to be to the power of two thirds. And then just four cubed there and so on. By, by four cubed. So I've changed all the 16 and 64. Everything's four to the power of something. And so we're on the way. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tidy up these things here. So it's a power to a power. So for this particular case, if you've studied the basic rules, you should really have those basic rules taken down. They're at the start of the video. Look at those for a couple of minutes first. They should be in your book also. But um, take time to think about that. But this here is like a power to the power. So if you like, this is like a, if I had x to the y all to the n say that will be then x to the y n I, I multiply these i don't add them all right so i actually multiply these two powers i don't add them now i want you to think of something else first just as a tip right 16 to the power of a half hopefully you know that to the power of a half is another way of writing square root what's the square root of 16 well that's just four isn't it so this stuff it has an answer of just four so if you like four to the power of one remember the solution to this, or the method, is to multiply these two powers. What's two times a half? One. So that actually is four to the power of one, which is four. You may have picked up on that at the start. If you did, brilliant. If not, don't worry. Let's just stick with the method. So again, our next step, I'm going to move over to here to write it. It's going to be write this stuff again down here. So four squared. We're not going to do anything with that yet. So four squared, but that squared is now going to multiply with that half. That's going to be now four to the power of one. And that's all going to be over. Same scenario here, four to the power of three, but that's all to the power of two thirds. So the three is going to multiply the two thirds like this little rule up here. So what's three times two thirds? Well, three times two thirds, hopefully you know, is two, right? Remember, top by the top, bottom by the bottom, six over three, if you like, right? So that's going to end up being four squared. So it's something that looks really tricky, but it ends up just being four to the power of two. And of course, the last part is just four to the power of three. Now. What do I do next? Well, these now is four squared times four to the power of one. This is where we add the powers. Remember, this is two fours, this is one four. Technically, we have three fours multiplying each other here. So the top should be four to the power of three, or four cubed. The bottom, same scenario, we add these two powers. That's now gonna be four to the power of five, right? Now what do we do next? Well, we want our answer with just this single four to the power of n. If that's the case, we're going to bring this guy up above the line, right? He's going to come up here. What does the rule say when we bring something above the line? Well, the sign of the power changes, right? Remember, if you had 1 over 4, you could write that as 4 to the power of minus 1. If you like, you bring that up, it's 4 to the power of 1. It goes to 4 to the power of minus 1. Sorry, <laughs> I should move that up there. Similarly, like 1 over x squared can be written as x to the power of minus 2. We can bring it up. So we're going to bring up 4 to the power of 5. We're going to go 4 to the power of 3. This time it's going to be multiplied by 4. This sign's going to change. So now it's going to be to the power of minus 5. And now we're back to another scenario where we add the powers. So that's going to be 4 to the power of 3 times 4 to the power of minus 5. That should be 4 to the power of minus 2. So actually, for us, we're going to have to leave our answer like this because I think in the question it says n, and I probably should have written that down there, it said n can be an element of any integer there, right? So, uh, of any integer. I think I wrote the euro symbol, not the element symbol. So, an element of any integer there, right? So, minus 2 is an integer. 
But if we had to write it like something and keep n as a natural number, I'd actually prefer to look at this, and I think most of these is what you see. We'll change this so we get this positive. How can we get this positive? Just bring it back down under the line. So it's going to be 4 to the power of 2. So we're like 1 over 4 squared. So this, all this stuff here, if you put this in your calculator, you should end up with 1 over 16, which is what 1 over 4 squared is. So hopefully that made sense to you. As I said, if you want to do these to relax, I think that's a good idea because I enjoy them. So here's another example for our rules of indices. Again, it's a leaving cert uh, standard, probably towards higher level. So we've defined the value of p. So all this stuff here simplifies to something, um, to some power, treat some power p. So again, we can't just put it all into our calculator. And maybe we can, but you can just at the log base three, but that's something totally different. So let's look here. So we've three to the power of a quarter multiplied by three to the power of one. And remember three on its own is three to the power of one multiplied by three to the power of six. So the top line, actually, we can rewrite as 3 to the power of a quarter plus the 1 plus the 6. Because all these powers can be added. Because again, if we think of our rules, that's what we can think of here. Like If I had 3 squared multiplied by 3 cubed, that would be 2 3s multiplied by 3 3s. That's why I add the 2 and the 3 to get 3 to the power of 5. Maybe slow down that and look back over it. But these are just the basic rules. If you're leaving at higher level, hopefully you're at a level now, especially looking at this example where you understand that fully. But now we just need to add the powers here. Now what about underneath? Well, underneath is going to change. We're going to change that square root because um, to the square root is the same as 3 to the power of a half. Yeah? So when we add all these things on top, what do we get? Well, on top we get 3 to the power of 17 over 12. And on the bottom, we're still left with this three to the power of a half. So what can we do next? Well, we're gonna bring this three up because we want to bring these together. And we should know that if we bring three to the power of a half on top, that will give us three to the power of 17 over 12 times three to now the power of minus a half. And of course, again, yes, we're adding these powers. So what are we gonna get? Well, this is going to be 3 to the power of 17 over 12, now literally minus that half. And that actually gives us 11 over 12, right? So for like six, uh, a half is like 6 over 12, right? So that's it, actually. So 3 to the power of 11 over 12 is now equal to 3 to the power of p. So if 3 to the power of 11 over 12 is equal to 3 to the power of p. Well, the only way they can be true is if the two powers are equal to each other. So that would imply then that p must be equal to 11 over 12, which of course is a rational number, it's a ratio, So, which is what they wanted at the very start. So p is an element of q. That's it.